Institut für den Donauraum und Mitteleuropa. Institut für die Danube Region und Central Europe. European Perspectives. Regional Actions. IDM Podcast. A very warm welcome to the first episode of the IDM Expertise Podcast. My name is Emma Ontoberi. I am a trainee at the Institute for the Danube Region and Central Europe within the EU for EU program. I arrived at IDM right after the French lockdown and have been introduced with the several aspects the Institute is covering, but mainly I have been helping with the launch of the IDM podcast series. For this first episode of this season, I'm here with Sebastian Schaeffer. Hello, Sebastian. Hi, Emma. Sebastian, you are the managing director of the Institute and we are going to discuss together about what is actually IDM, how it has been created and which kind of projects and events the Institute leads. Moreover, we will look to the recently changes that have happened during the pandemic crisis of the COVID-19. As a quick reminder, the Institute for the Danube Region and Central Europe, or IDM, is a non-university research institution based on association and consisting of individual and corporate members. IDM is especially interested in the current and particularly political situation of the countries in the Danube region, Central and South Eastern Europe. But moving on, Sebastian, could you tell us more about the creation of IDM back in 1953, two years only after the foundation of the European Community of Coal and Steel and nearly 40 years before the adhesion of Austria to the EU? Yeah, Emma, thank you very much for helping us with the creation of, of the IDM podcast series. And I'm very happy that we can talk about how the IDM was created in this first episode. And as you mentioned, it started almost seven decades ago. In 1953, the Research Institute for Issues of the Danube Region was founded by the Austrian politician and diplomat Theodor von Hornbostel, back then in Salzburg, because Vienna at the time was very much close to the Iron Curtain. It uh, was the era of the Cold War. And the basic idea behind the Institute was that we do not forget the countries that are behind the Iron Curtain. And so the mission statement back then was to contribute to a better understanding of the intrinsic political, cultural and economic forces of the Danube region and their significance for a peaceful and united Europe. It was, of course, still a long way to go, but for more than 30 years, the Institute was the only Austrian organization that devoted itself entirely to research in the Danube region, both within and beyond the border. And so these good neighborly relations, keeping contact, was one of the main areas that the Research Institute had been working on. Thank you very much, Sebastian. So, as you said, history has shaped the Institute. And this year, 2020, is the 25th anniversary of Austria joining the EU, but also of Dr. Erhard Busek becoming the chairman of IDM. Dr. Busek is the former Austrian vice chancellor and the minister for science and education. Could you tell us more about the changes which happened in the Institute since him becoming the IDM chairman? Yes, so when we look back to the 1990s, the situation was completely different from what it is today. There were new opportunities, but also challenges. The Berlin Wall fell, the Iron Curtain came down, but there was also the violent breakup of former Yugoslavia. The war started and um, Austria became a member of the European Union. Erhard Busek had been uh, already in contact with dissidents behind the Iron Curtain long before he became chairman and he continued this good tradition. He worked in uh, keeping close contacts with the people in the Danube region, fostering exchange, fostering good neighborly relations and the opportunities that arose were of course that now we could foster European integration with the addition of the Central and Eastern European countries to the European Union. The name of the Institute also changed. It was renamed to Institute for the Danube Region and Central Europe, as it is known today. 
Herbert Busek in 1995 replaced Norbert Leser as the chairman and also brought, of course, a new impetus for these new realities that we are living in. He uh, was a special coordinator for the Stability Pact for Southeast Europe, supporting the alleviation of the situation in the Western Balkans, supporting the accession uh, of those countries to the European Union through various programs. And uh, when we look back, challenges that the Institute took on is, of course, besides the fostering of the good neighborly relations and cross-border cooperation, especially informing the general public also of Austria's new role within the European Union through publications, through events, through panel discussions and exchange amongst experts in the region. And regarding relatively new topics, you joined IDM six years ago. What happened since? Which kind of projects and research have the Institute been leading? So when I joined back in 2014, I had been uh, already working with IDM through several projects and uh, my expertise is mainly on the Danube Delta. It's Ukraine, it's Moldova. I've been leading a couple of projects in those countries and with the people there. Once again, Europe violently changed. Crimea was annexed, a war in Donbass started and is still ongoing. And this was the reason why uh, I joined IDM, to bring my expertise also towards this area. Of course, the IDM has been working in the Danube region as a whole, even before I joined, but I tried to bring also new ideas into the Institute, namely, for instance, new formats of uh, seminars and summer schools. We started a policy paper series that deals with concrete recommendations to decision makers in the Danube region. And as I said, I had been working with IDM before, mainly within the framework of the DRC summer school. And when I joined IDM, I took over the responsibilities of the permanent secretariat of the DRC, the Danube Rectors Conference, which is a network of almost 70 universities within the Danube region. And in February 2019, you became Managing Director, which changes and challenges arose since last year. Well, if you take over the position of Managing Director of such a traditional institution, there is of course the challenge that you want to keep these functioning formats, but also adapt to new realities and new challenges that are arising. So uh, what we were trying to do with the whole team is to focus on the areas that the IDM has been active for the past decades, but also try to bring new ideas and new formats into working with our region. One of the changes that we have been doing is the introduction of a new slogan that tries to embody this tradition and new challenges. The slogan is uh, European Perspectives, Regional Actions, Cooperation and Expertise since 1953. So we are working mainly on four pillars in the Danube region. The first one is social challenges in CEE and SEE. The second one is focusing on the Danube region. The third one is the relationship within the neighborhood of Austria, but also of the European Union. And the fourth one, equally important, is of course the future of the European Union. And on top of all these ongoing projects, this year have been particularly challenging. With the pandemic crisis, IDM had to adapt itself to these new requirements and necessities. From home office to the creation of live stream videos, what can you say about this period of obligations, but also innovations? Well, I have to say, I'm very lucky that with the team we have been able to very quickly adapt to, once again, new realities. I remember we closed down the office, I think, on the 13th of March, shortly before the lockdown, and on the 19th of March, I think we had our first live stream. Everybody pitched in, everybody uh, used their own private resources and we kept the institute running despite the fact that we were not able to meet physically in the office. 
So, uh, as you mentioned, we um, developed new online formats. We had information on uh, what is going on in our target region through several live stream interviews. But we also have adapted, for instance, our traditional formats, like the panel discussion on the parliamentary elections in the Danube region, which we could no longer hold physically. But there have been a lot of them going on in the recent month. So uh, we started first with online discussions together with our partners from the Karl Renner Institute and the Politische Akademie. And recently we even had a, a hybrid format. We would have people joining us virtually, but we would also have people present and discuss this physically. Um, of course, this goes, goes on. We need to continue to also make our publications even more available online. One of the first things that we have been doing as a measure during the lockdown was that the last three issues of the Idem Info Europa have been made available electronically. We are going to expand this format. We are also testing new possibilities. Uh, very recently, we had a five-hour virtual conference that also worked very well. And we are certainly going to use this um, new opportunities and incorporate them into the traditional formats that the Institute has been doing. I have to say that on the one hand side, it has been a blessing that we have accelerated a lot of the new formats and, and developments that otherwise would have taken a bit longer. But on the other hand, of course, it has slowed down other processes we have realized that even though you can save a lot of time when you do formats online, you don't have to travel, uh, you don't have to meet, it cannot replace the social interaction. And I hope that when we will be able to completely return to some sort of normality, that we will take the lessons that we've learned with all the challenges that we have had in implementing online formats, and incorporating new formats and technologies in our daily work. But at the same time, also do not lose the social interaction and the exchange, which is extremely important for the goals of IDM in the future. Well, thank you very much, Sebastian. We are now coming to the end of this talk, of this first episode of the IDM Expertise Series, which is actually a brand new format that IDM has been producing as you explained. But before to conclude, looking toward the future, which are the next steps? We are more or less back in the office, but not on a regular basis. We are going to combine a physical presence in the office, but also making use of home office to work together with different formats. And this is something that we are also going to continue to implement when it comes to our events, our panel discussions, but also our uh, summer schools, our publications. There's a lot of things that we uh, are working on. This podcast series is certainly one of them. And I think we are going to try to make use of the lessons that we have learned and uh, try to expand well-functioning formats that can hopefully accompany our duties but on the other hand, of course, we are very much looking forward to be able to return back to also going into the region, meeting with the people in our target countries, because as I have mentioned, this exchange is invaluable for the work uh, that we have been doing here at IDM. Well, thank you very much. It was a pleasure to discuss with you about IDM. And thanks to everyone for listening to this first episode of the IDM Expertise Series. After 70 years of this ongoing fluctuation, changes of environment within the region and the Institute in order to tackle the alteration, the key point is fostering good neighborly relations, which remain the core task of IDM. Please find IDM Vienna on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. If you would like to hear more from us, subscribe and follow our work. Thank you very much again. Take care and see you soon for a new episode. Thank you very much, Emma.
IDM Podcast. Institut für den Donauraum und Mitteleuropa. Institute for the Danube Region and Central Europe. European Perspectives. Regional Actions. Cooperation and Expertise since 1953.